It's easy for an archaeologist to impress a member of the public with a discovery, but how would they go about the task of trying to impress another archaeologist? Well, they'd have to find something that their fellow archaeologists had never seen before, something that made even the most experienced experts sit up and take notice. In short, they'd have to find something like the amazing discoveries we're about to show you. Our collection of stories begins in Royston Cave, Hertfordshire, England. According to local legends, this was once a top-secret hangout for the Knights Templar. There's no way of proving that the secretive organization was ever here, but it clearly had some religious significance to somebody. The cave was found in 1742 by construction workers digging out fence posts. It's been investigated several times since then by archaeologists, all of whom agree that it was first dug out during the 13th century. What they're less sure of is who made the enigmatic paintings on the walls. There are symbols known to be associated with the Knights Templar here, but there are also a few symbols associated with paganism. There's no way the Knights Templar would have tolerated the presence of such symbols in their secret hideaway because they were religious Puritans. Perhaps it's more likely that the cave has been used by two different religious groups at two different points in history. Frustratingly for historians, it's unlikely that we'll ever know for sure. Someone went to a great deal of trouble to seal it up once they were done with it, though. This next artifact was in such a delicate state when it was discovered in April 1994 that it wasn't possible to safely remove it and take it away for safekeeping until 2017. Safekeeping is the perfect word to use here because the object is a safe. It might not look much like a safe because it's made of wood rather than metal, but it had alternative ways of keeping its contents out of the hands of thieves. It's booby-trapped and packed full of iron spikes that would go straight through the hands of anyone who tried to open it the wrong way. The safe is a product of the ancient Roman Empire and would have been referred to by its Roman owners as an Arca Ferrata. It wasn't found in Rome, though. Instead, it was found in the ruins of the Roman villa of Casa del Mitrio in Spain. Including this one, there are only four known genuine Arca Ferratas in existence. This one survived the passing of the centuries because the villa burned down around it, covering it in a protective layer of ash. Indian archaeologists working at the site of Raigad Fort had a very exciting discovery to report in March 2021. It's a 300-year-old gold bangle, which, if the experts are right about the providence and history of the object, once belonged to the legendary Maratha warrior Katrapati Sivaji Maharaj. Back in 1674, he made this fort his capital after seizing it from Chandraroji Moor, the former king of Jali. He then spent more than a decade renovating and strengthening the fort to guard it against future attacks. Sadly for him, his efforts were unsuccessful. The fort was captured by the Mughals in 1689 and then taken again by the British East India Company in 1818. Lots of people lived in the 18 villages that surround the fort, so it will be difficult to conclusively prove that the bangle belonged to the famous ruler, but it's very much of the style he wore for official portraits. That hasn't stopped Sri Shambhajiraji Chhatrapati, one of his living descendants, from attending the archaeological dig site to inspect the artifact in person. It will probably go on to be exhibited at an Indian museum. The Marmari Project has been ongoing in and around Istanbul, Turkey since 2004. During that time, more than 40,000 artifacts have been collected by the experts working on the project, shedding plenty of new light on the history of the region in the process. The most remarkable discovery made thus far is the entire 4th century port of Theodosius, which was once of huge strategic importance to the Byzantine Empire. The ruins of churches and water wells have also been identified and excavated, along with case after case of ceramics and pottery. 
The ultimate goal of the Marmari project is to construct a new underground railway that will connect Asia and Europe. But everything in the ground will be found and recorded first. Nobody really knows how much more there is to find here. But large-scale discoveries are still made regularly. Among the most recent is a cluster of 36 sunken merchant ships, still with their sails attached. The ships are thought to have gone down between the 5th and 11th centuries. Everything that's found here is sent to the Istanbul Archaeology Museum. Although the facility can't possibly have enough room to store everything at once, let alone display it. Salt is one of the most basic and plentiful minerals in the world. But all the salt you use in your cooking has to come from somewhere. 6,000 years ago, it came from a facility similar to this salt production site in Yorkshire, England. The discovery, which was made in March 2021, is said to be among the oldest salt processing facilities in Europe. It dates all the way back to the early Neolithic era. That's an enormous brine storage pit at the center of the site, close to a saltern with three hearths. Stone and flint tools have also been recovered from the site, along with broken ceramics. The ceramics may yet prove to be just as interesting as the salt processing center itself. The style of the pottery is very similar to discoveries from the same era made in France. This might confirm a long-standing theory that the first organized Neolithic society to live in Yorkshire might have come from France. What archaeologists would now like to know is whether they learned their salt mining skills while they were here or whether they imported them from their home country. How much can a dead parrot tell us about the history of trade in South America? Monty Python jokes aside, the answer is quite a lot. This mummified parrot was discovered recently in the Atacama Desert. To the historians who found it, it's proof of a highly sophisticated trade network that spanned across the Americas during the 12th century. Feathered birds were revered by the civilizations that lived here back then, and they were especially fond of exotic birds. Among other things, they would often be buried with powerful individuals as a sign of respect. This mummified bird probably suffered that fate. The issue is that there are no native parrots in the Atacama Desert, and there never have been. That means someone must have brought it all the way across the Andes and kept it alive for the entire journey. That wouldn't have been easy. The most likely way to move across such a long distance is through a llama caravan. None of this would have happened cheaply, and so the seller was probably generously rewarded. We wonder if they charged a set price or whether they included shipping costs. There's been a spate of interesting archaeological discoveries in Egypt recently. That's because the Egyptian government is making a concerted effort to find them. It's been a bad few years for tourism in the country, so the authorities hope that new archaeological finds will provoke fresh interest from abroad. One of the most remarkable discoveries that have happened in recent times took place in March 2021 at Tel Ganub Kassir al -Aguz. Here, at Bahiria Oasis, Archaeologists have found the world's oldest monastic site. The ruined monastery is so enormous that it's taken three whole years to fully excavate it. The religious building is divided up into six sectors, all of which are built several stories high and made of mud brick and basalt. Experts believe it's a 4th century construction, but they're puzzled about the fact that it's several miles away from the nearest Roman site. The monks who lived here must have done so in extreme isolation. While there isn't much of the original building left, it's possible to identify it as a monastery thanks to the graffiti that's still visible on the ancient walls. The buildings appear to have remained in use until somewhere around the 6th century, after which they were forgotten until now. While it's tempting to believe that each generation is a little less prudish than the one that came before it, that's probably not true. There have always been people who appreciate erotic art, as we can see from this first century oil lamp. 
The distinctly non-PG rated lamp was found in Sicily in March 2021 during ongoing digging work in Vallalunga Pratamaneo. Artifacts of a similar design have also been found in Pompeii, which has helped archaeologists to date the piece. The lamp is badly damaged and missing several pieces, but there's still enough of it left for us to see what's happening in the scene depicted on its centerpiece. There will hopefully be more finds like this to come from the site, although the experts don't have long left to find them. The digs were authorized ahead of the expansion of the Catania-Palermo railway line, which will eventually run through this area. It's thought that the lamp belonged to the wealthy Roman imperial owner of the domus it was found inside. They obviously had fairly exotic tastes when it came to art. Archaeologists have been working at the site of the Bukaprani Ignite mine in Hungary since 2007. The area has already made headlines around the world because of the 7 million year old trees that were found there. But in February 2021, it was back in the news for another reason. Experts have discovered this remarkable collection of gold cones and hoops. The artifacts come from the Copper Age some 6,000 years ago. They're almost certainly relics of the Bodrogkeres Tour culture, who were the first people in the Carpathian Basin area to make and wear gold jewelry. The newly discovered objects come from three tombs, all of which are thought to have been made for women. Interestingly, no gold artifacts at all were found in the one male grave that was found at the same site. Instead, he was buried with a stone blade, a stone axe, and a copper pick. That might suggest that women held greater power than men in this society, although it might just as easily mean nothing more significant than the fact that they were better dressed. Given that one of the women was buried while wearing a headdress, though, it's logical to assume that she was a ruler of some kind. Of all the things that a human being can leave behind for their descendants to find thousands of years in the future, footprints are among the most personal. That's what makes the many footprints of the Ojo Gurana Karst complex so interesting. They tell the stories of the people who made them. The prints were once thought to have been left on the soft floor of these Spanish caves by a small group of explorers around 4,600 years ago. There are 10 different sets of footprints, all of which were first discovered by Grupo Espeleologico Edelweiss in 1969. The options for investigating them without damaging them were limited back then, so closer study has only been possible after recent technological breakthroughs. For example, we now know that while the people who came through the caves back then were barefoot, they were sophisticated enough to plan in advance and bring torches with them. The most striking find, though, is that the 4,600-year-old prints are the most recent. The oldest was made around 19,000 years ago during the Upper Paleolithic. This wasn't a group of 10 people at all. It's 10 individuals walking through the caves at drastically different points in prehistory. Given that the archaeological site of Pompeii in Italy is world famous and has been known about for more than two centuries, it's astonishing that we're still making new discoveries there. We suppose that goes to show how thick the layers of volcanic ash and rock are, and how slow and laborious the process of sifting through it is. It's worth it, though because every now and then, someone will find something like this four-wheeled processional chariot. It was found during the excavation of a villa known as Civita Giuliana and is almost completely intact. In fact, it's in such astonishingly good condition that its original floral decorations can still be seen, as can its tin and bronze decals. The large size of the chariot suggests that it may have had a special ceremonial use, rather than being the type that people used for everyday public transport. It's even possible that it might be a pilitum, a carriage reserved exclusively for priestesses and high-ranking ladies. If so, it was probably used for marriages in exactly the same way that some modern couples 
still hire a carriage for their wedding day today. If you polish a mirror and look after it carefully, there's no reason why it can't last you a lifetime. Even taking that into account, though, you'd probably expect a mirror to lose at least a bit of its reflective ability after 2,000 years. That isn't the case with these Shangxi Province mirrors, which were found in China in April 2021. More than 80 of the fine-quality bronze mirrors were found inside an enormous Western Han Dynasty tomb in Qinhan New City. While not all of them are in fantastic condition, the best of them reflect the light just as well as anything we'd be capable of making today. The reverse sides of the hand mirrors are elaborately decorated. One of them is inscribed with the words, Home of Prosperity. As they're very personal possessions, they allow us an insight into the tastes and aesthetic trends of the ancient Chinese people of this era. More than 200 other artifacts ranging from pottery to iron wares were found inside the same tombs, but everyone who's seen the mirrors agree that they're the pick of the discoveries. We'll leave you to reflect on that. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon!